What is good, everyone? This is your host, Deanna Radulescu with Label Free Podcast. To live your best life, you must live label free. As always, bringing you incredible guests from all over the world. So sit back, relax, and tune in. My next guest is a former special education preschool teacher. She is also a yoga instructor and now an incredible author living her dreams. Please welcome Wendy Holler. Wendy, welcome to the show. No, thank you so much for having me. Now that I lose my voice because of this crazy weather we have in the Chicagoland area. Jeez, blah. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been on quite the journey. So you, you know, I, I God bless you for being a special ed preschool teacher because that's got to take a lot of patience and a lot of love because I think that would be very challenging. Uh, yoga instructor, love it. I wish I could do it, but I mean, that's just amazing. But you had a life changing thing happen where you shifted to shift gears and you can no longer do some of the things that you had that you were once doing. Can you kind of walk us through that journey and what happened that changed your life dramatically? Absolutely. Yeah, I, um, so I was diagnosed last October with psoriatic arthritis. It runs in my family. My grandmother had it. My father has it. And I had really bad scoliosis. And so I had cut off a lot of the symptoms. Um, you know, how we just do these things. Like I had tremors and I'm like, I had too much caffeine and oh, I'm low sugar, you know, and then it would be like the headaches and stress, blah, blah, blah. And um, so I ended up, yeah, kind of declining where I couldn't do my job because my job is so physical. My students need, they're three to five year olds and they just need a lot of physical assistance with their self-help skills and uh -huh. And I was just coming home. I mean, not to overshare, although I'm an overshare. I was coming home days on end and taking Epsom salt baths because my body just ate yeah. mm. so bad. And um, the headaches were getting worse. So I ended up, yeah, I went to my orthopedist and he was like, I don't think this is your back. I think you have arthritis. And then when I went to the rheumatologist, we did all the tests and yes. And she said that because it's hereditary, I've had COVID twice and it was most likely um, accelerated because of COVID. Oh, wow. Yeah. And that my immune system was just done, <laughs> you know, like just yeah. shot. So psoriatic arthritis is, it's an um, autoimmune disease. Okay. And it kind of, your healthy cells just start attacking each other. Okay. And so it causes joint damage. Oh. And so um, it can affect your small joints, you know, fingers, toes, to the large, the knees, the hips, the shoulders. I have it really bad in my neck. I'm on a lot of medication for it. Um, I do shots in my stomach every other week. You know, I take daily meds and vitamins and I did physical therapy and chiropractor and all the things. So it's, you know, it's one of those things where... Um, it does affect you day to day. Your diet, as we all know, the diet, inflammation, all that stuff. So my diet does affect it. I also have celiacs, another autoimmune disease. Yeah, right. So I'm okay, but I'm a hot mess. <laughs> I'm okay. Well, you seem like in good spirits. How was that when when you're when you got that diagnosis back? Was that shocking for you? I mean, that's got to be. I, I don't know how I would feel about that, even though I know that it's hereditary. Well, and that's the thing is like my family, we don't talk like the older generation, they don't talk about it. So I didn't even know, like I knew my dad had arthritis. I knew my grandmother had arthritis. She had the, you know, crinkly, the funky hands from the arthritis. I didn't even know this was anything that was coming down for me, you know? And so I've had those moments of especially when I had to, so I was out on intermittent FMLA based on how I was feeling. And then after the new year, when COVID spiked again, flu season came in, I can't get a flu or a COVID vaccine because of the medication I'm on. And it leaves me, um, 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 it leaves me susceptible. Compromise. compromise. Thank you. Immune compromise. Thank you. That was the word I couldn't think of. And, uh, and so it was like J January 2nd, everybody, all my colleagues are going back to school. My students are back in class and I'm not there. And it was like my identity. Yeah. Yes. 
ripped from me. Yeah. And the people like, that you were telling yourself that you were. Oh. That you're not. Yeah. If people said, oh, you know, who are you? I'm a teacher. What do you do? I'm a teacher. Right. Right. Exactly. You're so 19 years of it. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh. that. That would be hard. And, I, you know, that's one of the reasons why I started this this show is, it, you know, because of labels that I had on myself that I had to get to co- overcome those self yeah. beliefs. And so I think that, you know, it's some of our journey is very difficult to go through, but it's necessary for us to get to the next phase of yeah. what we're meant to do. And so now during this time, you know, you're dealing with now not going back to being a teacher, a yoga teacher or a preschool teacher. Yeah. Yeah. I had to, I had to, um, let go of the classes that I was teaching. Um, I had, I have some amazing yoga students and I tried here and there doing classes like every other week. And it just, this disease is so unpredictable as to when I'm going to have a flare or how I'm going to be each morning or how I sleep at night. Um, yeah, so yoga's taking a back burner and that's hard. That's, yeah. That's, Cause I need it. didn't it. help at all. I mean, cause yoga is pretty like healing. It is. It absolutely is. And being a teacher, I can just instruct and not do. Right. Um, but it just wipes me out. Sure. Um, the fatigue because of the side effects from the medication, the fatigue is a lot. Um, so it, now I'm practicing on my own instead of teaching I'm just subbing right now but even subbing will like knock me out like even just doing a restorative or a class I would be like yeah I can't I can I can cat I can't cow okay well I can't. That's something, though that's I know well that's and that's the thing is we have to learn like relearning like our limits like right. having been a yoga instructor and being able to do some pretty complex sequences and now being like, okay, I can cat, I can't cat, like a cat or like the, a cow pose. I mean, that's, but I can't hyper, I mean, you can't see, but I have so many grays up here because I can't get my hair dyed because I can't go back in a chair. Oh, uh, so that's, I got to do the little touch up kiss. That's, 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 you still like, you've got a great smile on your face. I can tell your energy is really, really great. So even through the screen, so all, oh, out, so aside from all this pain and, this you know disease that you have that you still seem to be in good spirits so now you are living your dream so talk to us about how that happened and why that came to fruition uh yeah so i published my first book and um i know thank you in may which was so weird i can't even tell you how many times i looked my own name up on amazon because it still didn't seem real after I went stuff on there like that. Oh, it is. And that was very hard. So I was a journalism major. Um, and so I've always been I've always been a writer for me. Sure. And so poetry was an outlet for my inner thoughts. And I've written for myself over the years. And my son went off to college in September or late August, and he made me promise him that I would write. He's like, I want you to write every day. I want you to write every day. And so didn't want to disappoint my boy. And uh, I started writing. And when I went out on full medical leave, like it was interesting because I had, I'd written a poem. I'd gone on a trip and I came back and I needed that break. And I came back, and this was in December, and I wrote a poem called I Am Not My Disease. Ooh, I like that. Okay. Yeah. And that was like a big kicker. I was like, yes, I'm not my disease. But then it's the whole fluctuation. I go on full FMLA, and I go into a little bit of a depression because I'm like, well, everyone's gone back to school, and I'm not. I'm not a teacher. What am I? I'm not my disease. What am I? And then my son Matthew's words came to me again. So I went to my grandma's cedar chest and gathered up all the poems that I had written through the years. I got my notebooks. I got my notes app. I got my thumb dropping. And I just started compiling them all. And then as I was doing that, I just realized that 
this is like my memoir. Yeah. This is all of the years of coming into my own from my late teens to I'm going to be 50 next Wednesday. So it was like this whole journey of, you know, like when you're like, you graduate high school and you're like, okay, now what am I going to do with the rest of my life? Yeah. You know? <laughs> like, so it's going from who am I in those years? Like, who am I? Where do I belong? Because you know, I was raised in a born again Christian, hardcore Pentecostal household. Oh, wow. So the labels. Oh, yeah on us of how to be and what to believe and you know what the thoughts that you're supposed to live in oh that box you know it's terrible the box is you know and then trying to be the good little girl to stay in the box when my mind is starting to be like but i don't believe that and i do feel like we should accept everybody and i don't think everybody's going to hell you right. know yeah that's, uh, that's powerful when you start having those thoughts and you're like questioning like who you are, who you want to be versus who you're supposed to be. Yeah. And not who you were, like the beliefs that you were told were yours and you start questioning. So it is, it's that journey from through four chapters or 30 years of my life of who am I to this is who I am. Yeah. Just stop, you know, like. Here I am, you know, like all of the hot mess and all of the things. And, um, but I, how was that looking back at some of those poems? Cause I, I've written a lot of poems too. I have, yeah. I'd love to publish. It's just something I cannot attack right now. It's just, I have done nothing. Yeah, like you've got a lot going on, <laughs> but I, I, I haven't looked at any of mine that I wrote when I was a teenager. How was that journey? Like going back and reading all of them? Because, you know, you life is, you, you know, we change as we get older. Oh, absolutely. Some of them were very adolescent. Like, so I was like, oh, this is so immature. <laughs> but some of them, like, did life experiences. And this is what I was afraid of putting this out is I was more, there's a poem in there about rape. There's oh. a poem in there about uh, suicide or suicidal ideation. And and I'm not going to say everybody, but I think a lot of people at some point in their life think, is it worth going on? Yeah. This is it's hard. Yeah. You know, this is really hard. And um, so seeing those again was difficult and deciding to put those in the book was really hard. Yeah. I think the harder one for me was putting in the religion one. Ooh, because got... of that ingrained do what you're told live by this thousand year old book you yeah. know um that was hard because i was like this 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 like yeah this is this is really going against like everything that has been taught to me that um so that was tough and then going through, there's a chapter all about soul searching and then another about love, loss, um, life, love, and loss. And it's about, you know, friendships come and go, loves come and go, thinking someone is your person and then realizing they're not, you know, the promise of forever, how it ended in a day. Yeah. Um, and then my last chapter, it's called I Evolved. And it's just about like, yeah, like being at that age where you're like, you know what? This is who I am. Yeah. And today I'm happy with that person. I've evolved, you know, and to be able to, what are they, what is it like with age comes wisdom or wisdom with age? Yeah. You know, and I hope the hope is, and I'm hoping with, you know, with the publication of this book and the others to come, that just means that I will keep evolving despite my disease, despite the limitations that I have on me physically, That's you know, that. Everything happens for a reason. Don't know what the universe is up to. The summer's a little wacky. Yeah. But, um, yeah, just like trusting, trusting the, trusting the journey, embracing it. How did your son feel when you told him that you're publishing your poems? Uh, he's been great. I mean, both my kids have been phenomenal. And um, a couple of them, my my son is um, a homosexual or, um. He's dating a transgender, 
Okay. Um, his boyfriend is amazing. There's actually a poem in there that I wrote for his boyfriend about living authentically in yourself. And um, I wrote one for my daughter about mean girls and mean teen girls. And so, you know, asking them, is this okay? Yeah, sure. You know, is this okay? And they were like, yeah, this is, you need to do this. Wow, I love it. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah, it is. And even my husband, he's like, I don't understand poetry, but it's nice. Because you are, being a, being a poet means you're very, you're deeper than, you know, just a regular person that's not. Like, because you see things differently. And it's like almost like writing music, so to speak, of yeah. experiences or emotions that you're feeling. And it's like very, if people don't, aren't that deep, they're not going to get it. Yeah. He, my husband's not. My husband's not that deep. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's and that's the thing. Like he, it, um, it's. I appreciate that he appreciates it, even if he doesn't. Like I wrote a story about it was, um, or a, a poem called "The Last Day of My Childhood," mm. and it, the poem talks about like the father brought a happy meal. It was the ha It was a happy meal. They sat together. They ate together and then the, the screen door closed the sound of the tires on the driveway as he pulled away that was the last day of my childhood and my husband raised it and he goes so did he leave is he not coming back and i'm like no dad's not coming back dad's gone yeah they had their cheeseburger and their nuggets together and now he's gone like dad has left you know but it's just you know i love it i know so, so you're working on other projects tell us about that so I am working on, so I have a children's book. Uh, I just got the cover yesterday. It's so cute. Uh, I have a children's book called Maggie Malone and Her Imagination. So that'll be coming out hopefully soon. I'm working with a publisher with my book of poetry, Kiss You Love Goodbye. I self-published that. Nice. And with the children's book, I'm going with a publisher just because I wasn't sure, you know, because there are pictures and you need an illustrator. And so it's kind of neat to experience both. Yeah, I bet. You know? And at the same time, I'm like, I'm 50 and I know nothing about this whole business. <laughs> yeah. I was like, you're doing pretty good, though. How was it self-publishing? Was it difficult? Do you know what's interesting is the print version was not the digital the ebook hmm. was it was just all about the form adding and luckily I had an amazing editor that walked me through but oh my goodness the number of drafts I must have gone through a lot huh so, yeah and there that's one thing I did not know anything about is sure. that okay I wrote a book great but all of the other things that come after it it's like I had a book launch and you have to market yourself, especially as a self-published author. And, yep. you know, I'm pounding the pavement, going to local bookstores. Hey, Lisa, I'm like, you know, yeah. you know, and uh, I'm kind of a private person. So to be on social media and be like, like selling myself, I'm like, I'm sick of me. Self-promoting. I call it self-promoting. You know what? I used to, so my late husband was a great self-promoter. And everyone around him was great at it. And I always kind of was in the background. I was very, we were great business partners together and were highly successful. But I, I wasn't able to really step into being comfortable of self-promoting until after he passed. And I was forced to do that. Yeah. And, you know, I just, I mean, it's just part of the territory now. But at first, it was very uncomfortable. It was like, oh my God, I'm putting myself out there. Like you just are... There's a lot of fear, a lot of, oh, I'm going to get rejected. People aren't going to like me. And I, I just don't care. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, either you love me or you hate me. Either way, I'm going to do what I'm going to do me regardless. And so whatever you have to, and this, especially in this day and age, you have to, you have to self-promote. You have to. Yeah. There's so much media out there. There's so much coming at people from every direction. And so in order to get your audience, you got to be out there in their face. I mean, yeah. that's yeah, no, I, I appreciate you saying that because I think that's I like I I was getting to the point those first few weeks after the book published where I was sick of myself. Like I'm sick of me boasting. Um, but you're right, you just have to get over it. And fear was the biggest obstacle putting this book out because of the 
deeper thoughts. And now I feel almost liberated. Like, okay, it's out there. Yeah. You know, there you go. No more skeletons in the closet. I know, exactly. It's so true. Yeah. It's, it you feels know? good. Like, you ain't nobody got nothing on me because I am exposed. Yeah. Everything about me, I, you can't come at me and try to like bribe me or anything because you got some secret because all my secrets are out there. Yeah. 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 And so you have also are working on a memoir, right? Yeah. So, well, the Kiss You Love Goodbye, that's my poetic okay. uh, memoir. You put it on so doing that. So we can. Sorry, I'm going to book. Mark. There we go. Okay. There we go. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, and it's still weird to like see my name on it. I'm just like, wait, that's me. very cool. Very. Um, cool. so I am, I have the children's book coming out. I have a second one in that series kind of waiting in the wings for once we finish this. And I started, I'm doing a little challenge called camp, uh, NaNoWriMo. It's the national novel writing month is july and so i've given myself a goal of writing fifty thousand words of my first novel Woo! You so yeah out. wow um, i i got twelve thousand in i gotta step it up a little bit but that yeah, we're, we're you got more than half a month yeah right and but that's another fear like okay i can't write a poem but holy crow to write a whole novel you got so, this you got i'm just you know it's a challenge it's good it kind of fills that void of I, I'm not working and I'm home. And then the other thing I'm working on is I'm going to be doing my second book of poetry called Ache. Mm. And I really want to explore what that word means. Okay. Because it is taken on such a different meaning for me because I write such emotional poetries and I always think like I'm like a layman's poet I really write you know the feelings from the heart and what I'm feeling and they're not abstract you know yeah um yeah it can be a lot of different things for different people for me when I think of the word ache yeah. I, I've um it's more of like I'm I'm not successful I'm aching like I'm I I've I've not fear but it's like that that pain of like I'm not going to be successful I'm not going to to achieve these this dream I have and so like that's an ache that I would yeah. I, I don't really experience a lot of physical pain where I yeah. think people think ache that they're they're in pain but no it's more of like I ache am I going to actually be as successful as I want to be you know I, I wouldn't say like the imposter syndrome because I really don't believe in that but like every once in a while you're like things are going very slow you know I'm sure for yourself yeah, yeah. release your book it's just like, oh, uh, you know, like, oh, uh, that. Well, that's so. Would you say that when you, it's like self doubt, like this self doubt? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's so. I had the physical ache, obviously, but the word is taking a different meaning because I, I had to mourn the loss of a profession that I've had for nineteen years, yeah. and also ex accept that there's always going to be another kid mm -hmm. you know like I instead of looking at it you know I had to basically get over myself and um you know like and who who am I I'm a teacher I, like get over myself and then just say it, rethink it as I've taught for 19 years yeah that's I had 19 good years I yeah. did the best I could to support my students in their early development, there's yeah. always going to be another student. It's time for a shift. Yeah. And I feel there's a lot of shift happening for a lot of people. Oh, too. absolutely. You know, I definitely feel that's happening. And the fact that it's a writing and a dream I always had for myself, but never would say out loud and never thought would come to fruition. And I still have that. In, two days ago, I had the imposter syndrome. <laughs> So the universe has worked in mysterious ways, and this is where you are today. So it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Did you want to throw that question out there to the audience? I would love to. I really would. So again, I'm writing my next poetry book. I'm I don't want to rush it because I really, I feel that there's this ache to discover 
how others interpret that word for themselves, whether it's physical, mental, spiritual, whatever. So yes, to your listeners, if you want to get in touch with me, I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Wendy Howler. Um, I have my website, wendyhowlerauthor.com. I'm on Twitter, all the, all the places. All the things. All the things. I really want to know. And really sit with it. And this is where the yoga teacher is going to come to me. <laughs> really sit with it. Like close your eyes and, and say the word internally a few times. Say it out loud. And how does that make you feel? Mm. And what do you what do you see? How does it make you feel? Where do you feel it in your body? Yeah. Um, yeah. So you guys, if you have an answer to that question, go click the links below and put her, her links in the show notes. So go check her out on all the socials. Follow her. Check out her website if you want to purchase one of her books. Go to Amazon, purchase her book, and get back to her about what the word ache means to you. When, uh, Wendy, this is the part of the show where I like to ask for last words of wisdom or advice. What would you like to leave with us today? Um, I think the biggest takeaway that I've had for myself in the last nine months that I would share is we always get knocked down. Mm. We can always get back up again. Yeah. And just know that when you are down, it's because there's something else out there waiting in the wings for you. And just to keep moving forward. Like I said two days ago, I had complete imposter syndrome about being a writer and doing a novel. And then I woke up in the middle of the night and wrote my next scene. Beautiful. You just don't know. So it's just trust the process, embrace the journey. I think that's it. That's why I'll leave you. Embrace the journey. We never know where it's going to lead. That's right. Just embrace it. This one beautiful life. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Wendy, for being such a spectacular guest and overcoming some of these setbacks that you've had and now stepping into your purpose, living your dream. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful thing. We appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, this has been beautiful. So fun. You're welcome. You guys, this is your host, Deanna Radulescu with Label Free Podcast. To live your best life, you must live label free. As always, don't forget to subscribe, follow, rate, review, comment, share, all those good things. And I'll be back soon with more dynamic guests.